And now a search for the happiest place on Earth. Disneyland claims that distinction, of course, but with all due respect, we wanted some place where the mice don't talk. Some place where real people face the daily grind, but are somehow nudged by their surroundings, their values, their government, into becoming the most content society on the planet. Well, we found it. But where it is and how they live might just surprise you. When you imagine the happiest place on Earth, you might pick a spot with warm sand and soft breezes. A sun-kissed vineyard, perhaps, or a Mediterranean village. If asked to name the happiest country on Earth, you might choose this one. Land of the free, home of the brave. But when you let go of patriotic pride and travel brochure fantasy, when you use social science to rank 178 nations, a paradise like Fiji comes in more than 50 spots below Iceland. And for all their style and cuisine, France and Italy rank well below Canada. And while we may be number one in wealth and power, when it comes to happiness, the good old USA is number 23. How do we know? Well, for the past decade, social scientists and pollsters have given elaborate questionnaires to hundreds of thousands of people around the globe. The answer you get is not only how they feel right now, but it's also about how they feel about their entire life. Dan Buettner is the founder of Blue Zones, a project that studies happiness and longevity around the world. He says that if you mine all the databases of universities and research centers, you will find that the happiest place on Earth is Denmark. Cold, dreary, unspectacular Denmark, where stoic locals wear sensible shoes and snack on herring sandwiches. Sure, they produce the occasional supermodel, but their most famous countryman is Victor Borga. Could they really be the happiest in the world? On a scale of one to 10, how happy are you? Eight. About eight. Eight, I guess. Right now, I'm probably like nine. Seven, I suppose. Eight, I think. An eight. <laughs> yeah. nine, nine, and nine and a half. Nine and a half. Yeah. <laughs> 10. It went on like this most of the morning, until finally, a grouchy Dane. I think it's the biggest lie in the world that the Danes should be so happy because they're not. But when pressed, even Miss Pottymouth slipped into gratitude. I'm content. Like she said, most Danes, we have no reasons to complain. Well, they do have one complaint. In fact, I heard it from a couple people. Taxes. Yes, the happiest people in the world pay some of the highest taxes in the world, up to 63% of their income. In exchange, the government covers all health care and education and spends more on children and the elderly per capita than any other nation in the world. With just five and a half million people, the system is efficient, and people feel toikit, the Danish word for tucked in, like a snug child. You feel taken care of? Yes. Now, the politically incorrect truth is that Denmark has very little diversity. Nine in 10 are full-blooded Danes. Eight in 10 are Lutherans. Of course, happiness can exist in melting pots like America, but social scientists point out that higher taxes are easier to pay if you know the money is going to someone who looks and thinks like you. Those high taxes have another effect. Since a banker ends up taking home about as much as an artist, people don't choose careers based on income or status. We see people quit their job because, no, I want to, I want to do something that I really, really like. They have this thing called Yenta Law, which essentially says that you're no better than anybody else. A garbage man can live in a middle-class neighborhood and hold his head high. Well, let's find a garbage man. His name is Jan, and he says he took this job because he only has to work five hours in the morning and then spends the rest of the day with family or coaching his daughter's handball team. Danes really love handball. But Jan also says he really loves being a garbage man, and no one judges his choice of career. When we come and say hello, that makes other people happy. And the smile is a good thing. The old ladies give us a little cup of coffee. Or that's, that's happy. You're not just collecting garbage, you're spreading happiness. Yes. In this job. Yes. If I'm happy, the people are happy. Joseph is another example of Danish status. He is a carpenter's apprentice. What is it you enjoy? I think the thing about 
building something. When you've worked the whole day and you can see what you've done. On weekends, he likes to fish and hunt. Yeah. And play with his new puppy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that castle over there? That belongs to his family. He also happens to be a prince. So who is this handsome gentleman? Uh, it's my great, great grandfather. Yes, Joseph is a descendant of the Danish king, related to the royal houses of France and Spain. And again, he's chosen to be a carpenter's apprentice and rarely discusses his lineage with anyone. You couldn't ask for a greater opening line with the ladies than, yeah, I'm royalty. It's... Don't you ever use that? No, never. <laughs> Come on. Well, that's wasted, man. We yeah, gotta... <laughs> I know. A lot of people say that. It's better if they found out themselves, and it works even better. Joseph invited us over for a Danish tradition called hugge, cozy, intimate, spontaneous gatherings with neighbors and family, emotional insulation against the long winter. And hanging out with other Danes may just be their happiness secret. 92% belong to dancing clubs or singing clubs, even laughing club. Get a few people together who enjoy cold water swimming <laughs> or model train building, and the government will pay for it. Yes, in Denmark, even friendship is subsidized. And this is what is called a post-consumerist society. People here have nice things, but shopping, consuming, it's not a priority. I can't get over the fact that this is the smallest 7-Eleven <laughs> sign <laughs> on the planet. You know. Even the advertising is self-effacing. And with less emphasis on personal possessions and a strong social fabric, Danes also display an amazing level of trust in each other and their government. Did you notice when you walked in the country, uh, there was no long lines? They didn't like, even hmm. check my passport. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you look like a nice guy. Come on through. <laughs> Vegetable stands run on the honor system. Mothers leave babies in strollers, unattended outside cafes. And most bicycles are unlocked. And now that I think about it, the bicycle may be the best symbol of Danish happiness. They can all afford cars, but they choose bikes. Simple, economical, non-polluting machines that show no status and help keep people fit. You have a good society that takes care of you. And Mainly, people are good to each other. You can live your life, so it's a good place to be. When we come back, a country where laws are posted everywhere, newspapers are censored, and punishment is by caning. So what makes it one of the happiest countries anywhere? And the surprise place that's the unhappiest in the world. Next. <laughs>